the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Buckeyes, your daily podcast on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Buckeye fans? Welcome back to another episode of Locked On Buckeyes, part of Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jay Stevens, also the host of the Jay Stevens Podcast. It is Wednesday, April 28th in the year 2021. And I want to take this time to remind you to make sure you check out the Locked On Today podcast because you can get more of the sports news you need in less time with the Locked On Today podcast. Follow the Locked On Today podcast on the Odyssey app, or wherever you get your podcast Lined up for today, like I said earlier, Ryan Roberts was supposed to be with us today. Once again, schedule conflict, something came up, and we had to push that back one more day. In segment two of today's show, we will finish out our prediction period uh, for the NFL draft today. In segment two, we'll hit the day three or rounds four through seven predictions, as well as hitting those that I think will be undrafted free agents. Segment three, we're moving Jay's weekly rant to today. A lot of moving around in this week's show. Jay's weekly rant is more advice during draft season and during the NFL draft. We begin today's show talking about one Buckeye who I think will have a really good time in the NFL once he is drafted. I remember the time when I got the news that Trey Sermon would be a Buckeye, transferring from Oklahoma, no no longer being a Sooner, and he would be a Buckeye for the future season, which was this past Ohio State Buckeye football season. I was very excited. Very, very excited. You had a guy that was successful in another system that down there in Oklahoma and Norman with Lincoln Riley and the variety that they have down there. And you see his role. You hear about the injuries. Some people, you might remember what he did when he when Ohio State lost to Oklahoma, I think was during the 2017 season. We remember all those things. And I was excited for this one reason. Losing J.K. Dobbins was huge. And I knew what Master Teague was in his freshman year, but I personally didn't think that Master Teague was up to the task. And I didn't think he was, I didn't think he would be a starting running back or show flashes that he could sustain and be a starting running back as well. So here's an interesting thing about Trey Sermon. Going back to that time as well, Trey Sermon, he had experience. Yes, he has some injury issues. But he adapted very, very well to Ohio State's offense once he got some run, uh, once he was able to really just be more of a feature back at Ohio State. You know, those first couple games, you don't really have the uh, the proper or your normal offseason workout plan. Yeah, it's tough. It's very, very tough to be able to get your feet wet, to be able to get acclimated, to know where Josh Myers is going to be, White Davis is going to be, Harry Miller, Mumford, and Petit Freyer, where the linebackers and where the quarterback is going to hit you for that fake or you know how much pressure he's going to put on your shoulder pads before pulling that fake out. There's so many minute details that go into transferring from one place to another. So I understand all of that. And even the, during the season, we saw when Trey was given the ball, we saw Trey Sermon. <laughs> that boy went off. <laughs> That boy went smooth off. And I was very excited for that period. And then the natty came. And then an injury came early in that game. And it just seemed like that one loss, along with the others that were there as well, some of the O-line, some of the D-line um, that were there during that Rona season where Buckeyes honestly didn't really get to practice much either. Maybe if they practiced much more, got more practices in, other than the two that I heard they got in, in between the Sugar Bowl and the natty, Maybe that margin of defeat wouldn't have been as wide. I still think Alabama would have won that game, but the margin of defeat may have been a whole lot closer. Trey Sermon, there are a few reasons. I got a couple really quick on the top of my head as far as why I think Trey Sermon in the NFL, if he gets the right fit, will work. And I do think he works in different situations, different systems as well. Trey Sermon, he's healthy. He is fresh. He hasn't had a season in college where he had over 200 carries. That's big because when you know a lot of guys in 
college, they're getting, a, especially a featured back, they're getting a lot of carries. I mean, think about the amount of carries that J.K. Dobbins has had. I don't have it right in front of me, but you can, you guys can use your brain and realize how many it was. Think about before him, Ezekiel Elliott, all the carries that he had. They had a lot. So Trey Sermon is fresh, not just from what he had at Ohio State, but also from what he had at Oklahoma. He looks like he's recovered from his injury, his broken collarbone, which is huge because right now, if you want to have a chance to get drafted as high as you can to get as much money as you can, that pro day, the medical, seeing the vertical, 37 inches, the 40, the shuttle drill, I think it was 683, or the, you know, the, it was either the cone drill or shuttle drill. I get those, get, I get the two mixed up, but it was a 683, and it was very impressive. And those there documented how impressive it was to them. And then you think about the possibility of Trey Sermon falling in the draft. I say falling. I think if he wasn't, if he didn't get injured and he had a full season, I think he would be a day two pick. But with the injury, with the not with him not really getting the bulk of the carries, I don't think he would be a day two pick because you're going to get guys like uh, Travis Etienne or Najee Harris or a lot of your top end running backs. There's a guy from North Carolina. I don't know his name at the top of my dome, but those guys are going to be day two. You might get one falling into day one with running backs being what they are in the NFL. I think you're going to get most of your top tier running backs day two, your next year day three. Um, no, top tier day two, uh, round two, and then the other rest, rest round three. And then you get Trey Sermon that's going to be a day three pick. Not knocking him, not saying he's going to be a bad fit for the NFL. There's just a couple of things hindering him from moving to day three unto day two. Remember yesterday I mentioned that I was going to talk about Trey Sermon? Well, there you go. Let's go ahead and step away very quickly. When we come back, we'll go through the rest of the Buckeyes predicting those day three. And also those Buckeyes, I think, will be undrafted free agents. But first, check this out. There's a good chance you're a person like me that loves a good protein bar. You know you guys are working out or maybe you try to eat, eat a little healthy. Got yourself a meal plan. Trying to fit it right inside of your macros so things hit just right. Well, Bill Bar is a place where I have ended my search for a good protein bar, and I thoroughly encourage you to end yours as well because, guys, Built Bar is great for the health-conscious guy. It'll help you lose and maintain weight while indulging in a de delicious treat. Bars are low-calorie, low-sugar, high-protein, high-fiber, and they're also great for the keto diet. And one interesting detail about every Built Bar is that they are covered in 100% chocolate. Go to BuiltBar.com and use promo code LOCK15. L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, and you will get 15% off your next order. Once again, go to BuiltBar.com and use promo code LOCKED15, and you will get 15% off your next order at BuiltBar.com. If this is your first time listening or watching Lops on Buckeyes, I want to say welcome. Or if it's your first time in a long time watching or listening to the podcast, I want to say welcome back. And along with the audio podcast feeds that Locked on Buckeyes goes to every single day, you know, your Odyssey, the Odyssey app or Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts or Stitch or iHeartRadio or many of the other podcast apps where you can check out Locked on Buckeyes. There's also a YouTube page dedicated to the podcast as well. Locked on Buckeyes has its very own YouTube page. Check out Locked on Buckeyes on YouTube. Subscribe so you're updated whenever you get Whenever a new video is uploaded, you will get updated when that happens. Locked on Buckeyes on YouTube. I know some of you may be on WKYC.com. That's a great place to get it as well. So many great places to check out Locked on Buckeyes because Locked on Buckeyes is a place to get and stay up to date with your Ohio State Buckeye coverage and know what's going on with your favorite teams. Dropping a new fresh episode to you every Monday through Friday. Day Number three. Today, what do we have here? I mentioned on Monday's show, predictions-wise, Justin Fields will be a top 10 pick. I mentioned yesterday some teams that were outside of the top 10, but there, be, they, there may be move it for him for them to get into the top 10. And Justin Fields, I think, will be a quarterback that is selected in the top 10. Not saying he's not QB2 on most boards or my board, but just where things are falling right now. Also, side note, I know I've made some things about Mac Jones. I don't think Mac Jones is a bad quarterback. I think he's a really good quarterback. Um, you can say whatever you want about his DUIs and uh, his, his beer belly, all that kind of stuff. I think Mac Jones 
is a good quarterback, and whoever gets him may have a shot to have him compete for a starting role. I'm not saying he's going to be a starter for a very long time, but he is a good quarterback, and if he wasn't as good as he was, the offense would not have flowed better under him at Alabama than it did under Tua Tungavailoa. So back to our predictions, a little review, recap. Justin Fields, will, Justin Fields will be a top 10 pick. I did say there will be two Buckeyes selected in the top 10 in the first round. Now I'm going to go back. Um, so Fields automatically, and the others I mentioned, Davis, Browning, Myers, or Werner, will be possibly one of those that will be a first-round pick. Day two picks for the Buckeyes. They go as follows. For sure, Davis will be gone. Browning, Myers, Werner, Tommy Togiai, and then also Sean Wade. Togiai probably early third round. Sean Wade probably late third round. If Sean Wade had a solid concrete position, there's a good chance that Sean Wade would have be a day, uh, round two pick. I don't think he. I don't think he was good enough right now. Last season to be a day one pick, probably a round two pick, latter part of the of the second round. But with this, with this, uh, with his situation and with really the position for him not really being concrete, day three, no, excuse me, round three. Get my days and rounds mixed up. Round three is where we are. Already mentioned Trey Sermon. I do think he's a day three pick. That is once again rounds four through seven. I do believe that Trey Sermon will be a picked in the first half of the fourth round. And then we have players like Justin Cooper, Justin Hilliard, who I do believe will be picked. Jonathan Cooper is a tweener. He's interesting. At 257, I believe, is what he weighed in at. He's not really big enough to be a 4-3 defensive end most of the time. Now, maybe you've, you've had some guys that are undersized that fit very, very well. But at 257, he's not your 3-4 stand-up defensive end. He's not your, not your hand in the ground. Uh, was it 7-5 or 6 or 7 technique? technique? I, I, my mind's not really knowing talking technique once they get outside of the defensive tackles. But Cooper, does he fit the 3-4 scheme with the hand in the ground? Mm -mm. Does he fit the 4-3 scheme in the NFL with the hand to the ground at his size? You would probably say no, but it, it can happen. Does he fit the stand-up 3-4 outside linebacker almost rushing? I don't think so, well, mainly because we haven't seen him play stand-up while at Ohio State. So I personally don't think that's the right move. However, however, things can change. One thing I've noticed and I've learned Moving from going to having your hand in the ground your entire life or most of your career in, or your entire career in college to going and standing up, there is a learning curve. You don't you haven't done those drills. You haven't done those movements at all. Most of the time while you're at Ohio State, while you're in school. So going from not doing them to doing them, there's going to be a learning curve for him. Also, does he have the speed at that time? I, I, he's, he's quick. Don't get me wrong. He reads very well, and he gets up and down the side, up and down the, the line of scrimmage very, very well. I just don't know how well he fits into the next system or the next level, which is the NFL. We have seen guys, I have been trophy winners. I'll name a couple of them. Going back to my younger days, I can go to recent days as well. You can still go back to Jason White of Oklahoma. You can go back to, oh, let's go back to the 90s. Charlie Ward, a man I had the interview, uh, the privilege to interview uh, about a month or two ago. He talked about, well, they wanted to change my position. I wasn't going for that. He wanted to be a quarterback. So he went another route, went to the NBA, had a long 10 year, 10 or 11 year career in the National Basketball Association. Matt Leiner, Heisman Trophy winner. What happened? Got to the league. It just didn't work out. Now, these are quarterbacks, but it goes to the same thing with defensive ends and linebackers and running backs. So many times, so many players, the transition from college to the NFL just doesn't work out. Go back a, a little bit. You guys will probably, a lot of you will remember this. Remember when LeBron James was coming out of high school and there was another guy alongside of him that was supposed to be a guy coming, coming out of high school that's supposed to be that dude, supposed to be really, really good. New York, you know, New York basketball, those point guards, they got really good at handles. They got the spit, they got the English off the glass. I mean, they're, they're really, really good at playground guys. Sebastian Telfair didn't work out. He skipped two levels. He skipped a level. You know, sometimes guys skip a grade because they're they're just that that good that kid that kid and that good. Or you guys maybe have watched Smart Guy, the Disney show back in the day. I keep going back to my younger days. Smart the uh, Smart Guy believes the name of the TV show. 
um, 10, 11 years old in high school. I mean, he will sk- skip grades. Well, Sebastian Telfair, like LeBron James, plan on going from high school, skipping college, going to the NBA. It didn't work out at all. It doesn't work out for everybody. So I do think it'll work out for Sermon. I do think it'll – I'm not up in the air about Cooper. Hilliard I'm interested it with, and I got to speed through this. I didn't realize how long I had spent on Sermon and Cooper. But Justin Hilliard, if you take the injuries away, if you take the absences, absences on the field away due to the injuries, I think Justin Hilliard's a day two pick. I'm, I'm being completely honest. If there was not the scare of the injuries and the injury concern from him that he had at Ohio State – I truly think Justin Hilliard is a, a day two pick, round probably round three. Uh, I don't think he's round two. We didn't don't know enough about him. Uh, didn't see him on the field enough to know if he'll be a day two pick. But I do think he'll be a he would be a round three pick. But I think he's a day three pick due to injury history and not really getting on the field very much last year. But when he did, we saw Hilliard show up. Oh man, and show out very instrumental in that win over Northwestern in the Big Ten Championship game. Undrafted free agents, I got three. I got four. Tough Borland, don't think the next level is for him as far as his skill set, unless there's a major transformation from what he is to what he can be or will be. I don't think he's going to be playing in the National Football League. Luke Farrell, I talked about this recently. Ohio State doesn't really use the tight end, and Farrell was never the best tight end at Ohio State. But I think I think he'll be in a camp. I'm not sure if he'll be on a roster week one. The Drew Christman and Blake Cobbell, um, mainly because they're specialists, kickers and punters. Um, I'm not really thinking that there's going to be uh, uh, they're going to be drafted uh, in the seventh round. You could pick up a you could pick up a punter or kicker, um, undrafted free agent after the draft. Draft ends on Saturday night. They may those guys may get a call at the end of the draft immediately. A pick up. Uh, yeah, uh, we want you. Got let's step away very quickly. I had to run through that last part. Very swiftly. When we come back, when we come back, we'll go through Jay's weekly rant. Now, it's not really a rant, but more advice for all of us, including myself, during the NFL draft. But first, check this out. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your sports action. Football might be over, but it's baseball season, and baseball is in full swing. And you can track all the action at betonline.ag. This week has tons of sports action on the go. As the NFL draft is on and the Kentucky Kentucky Derby is back as the first leg of the Triple Crown begins this weekend. Get all the latest news, odds, and info for all your sporting needs, including MLB, NBA, NHL, and all your UFC slash MMA action. Before the next pitch, Head over to betonline.ag on your laptop or mobile device and check out all the great sporting news, sign-up bonuses, and contest information. Don't sit on the sidelines anymore as this is your chance to get into the game as teams prep for their runs to the playoffs. Head to betonline.ag on your computer or mobile device to sign up today. And when you sign up, make sure you use promo code Locked On. L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N. And receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online, your online sports book experts. As we wrap up today's show here on Locked on Buckeyes, remember you can always subscribe or follow to Locked on Buckeyes. And I got to give a reminder very quickly. Make sure you're filling up that review section, guys, on Apple Podcasts with five-star reviews. You got them one, two, three, four, and five-star reviews. Fill it up, fill it up. Let more people know about Locked One Buckeyes, and that is the place to be to stay up to date on your Ohio State Buckeye football and basketball teams. Also, I got to give a great, uh, just a great shout out to you and say thank you. The downloads this month have been amazing. I rarely, rarely, I started checking them consistently to write my face normally. Um, I'm not a big numbers guy as far as following the stats of the show. I probably should be, but I want to say guys, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for pushing the show, listening to the show, downloading the show and keep coming back to the show. Speaking of the show, which will be the NFL draft in this situation, which starts Thursday evening, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Some quick advice. I've had to remind myself about this. And I think sometimes as fans, I am a, I am a fan just like you. As fans, sometimes we get tunnel vision. We get locked in on our players. 
We want the best for them. We expect the best out of them when they're on the field. And when we're talking about players that will be drafted first round, second round, third round, any round of the draft, and once they get to the NFL, people are already going to say, that guy's going to be a Hall of Famer. That guy's going to be a pro bowler. Mm, that guy's not going to be on the field very long. That guy, he's going to surprise some people. And I'm making predictions myself, but at the same time, I am perfectly fine being wrong with these predictions. They're predictions. This is fun. This is supposed to be enjoyable. But sometimes people get the ride or die mentality with their favorite player. And I even saw people, people on Twitter, people asking questions. What do you think about this player? What do you think about that player? Well, I got to remind you, there are going to be some freshmen at Ohio State. There are going to be some rookies in the NFL. They haven't played a lick of that level of ball yet. And you're going to say, uh, Pro Bowler. Um, five times, um, uh, Super Bowl win, Super Bowl MVP. Uh, okay, that sounds great in, in jest, or that sounds great right now. But making those type of things and saying concrete ride or die with this decision, pump the brakes. We are not them. We're not with them in the weight room. We're not with them in the locker room. We're not with them on the practice field. We're not with them on the plane flying from their home to the next location where the game will be played and i caution everyone i was talking to my brother this is a while ago and we were watching a basketball game a high school basketball game at one point and it was either romeo langford or trayvon trayvon blewett one of the two romeo langford now at the celtics uh trayvon blewett was at xavier i don't think he's in the nba anymore and there was a guy, North Central High School, Eric Gordon went there. Uh, Chris Wilkes went to UCLA. Then he left early. He shouldn't have left. And now he's not in the league not in the league at all. I don't think he made a team camp. And I, it was a question that my brother was asking me. And I took this approach back then. Sometimes I lose sight of that. And my brother was asking, do you think he'll be a pro? I said, I don't know. <laughs> I said, I, I have no idea. We just watched this cat score 35 points. But sometimes we watched Romeo Langford score 45 points. I was not at the game, saw it on TV. I was, I was at a game, I believe, Romeo Langford hit 40 points, and he basically, uh, his coach caught a timeout after he had a, a shot from the volleyball line in high school. It's sold out arena, uh, sold, sold out gymnasium, probably 7,000 seater, and people just stood up, started clapping for the young man. And people were saying things about Romeo Langford and Travion Blewett and Chris Wilkes about the NBA level before they played at the college level. And I'm like, Y'all, I don't know. I have no idea. I watch those guys play more than my brother or my dad or all the people that I know. And just because I watch them on that level, that knows that says nothing about how they'll be at the highest of highest levels. NFL, it is the highest level. It is amazing. And it's one of those areas that we it's very, very hard to predict what will happen. It's a reminder to myself, I'm sure it's a reminder to a lot of people, making bold statements. So it's ride or die. This guy hasn't played at Ohio State, but he's going to be a first-round draft pick. What? What are you talking about? You, you, no, 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 no. I caution everybody. I caution you. Now, people will do that. People, Some people will be right. I caution everyone. Caution you. We're going to wrap up this show with this here statement. We have never seen them play at that level, either a freshman at Ohio State or a guy who hasn't been drafted yet play in the NFL. We haven't seen them play yet. So making statements such as, he's a Hall of Famer. He's a day one starter. He won't play at all. Unless you're a person that's fine not having that ride or die mentality and you're saying, I'll make the prediction, but it's just out of prediction and I'm fine being wrong, be careful. Be careful about making bold statements about athletes or even ourselves because we have no idea what's going to happen. Guys, this has been fun, a lot of fun. We'll be back tomorrow and Friday. Friday, recapping day one of the draft and still predicting what could happen the rest of it and then just really staying up to date with what's going on at Ohio State. You guys can always follow me on Twitter at jstevens07. Follow the podcast on Twitter at Locked on Buckeye. Send all your emails to jstevens317 at gmail.com. If you're not on Twitter and you would love to connect with me, before we go, I remind you about Locked on po- the Locked on Podcast Network and the plans to cover the NFL Draft. This year, the Locked on Podcast Network is partnering with the Draft Network to cover the NFL Draft live. 
Get insight and analysis from Locked On local experts and the Draft Network's national experts. Subscribe to the Locked On NFL YouTube page to watch live three-day coverage of the NFL Draft April 29th through May the 1st. As long, along with the NFL Draft coverage, come back tomorrow. Come back tomorrow. We'll, uh, we'll have a lot of fun previewing the 2021 NFL Draft.